So what I'm going to talk about is um, data shades, um, which is a pretty broad term for our um, open source project. Um, but what I'm specifically going to focus on is um, CCAN at scale. Um, so the main objectives of the data shade CCAN build um, is to get scalability, um, high availability, and enterprise management. So um, what I've observed over time um, of my involvement with CCAN and, and looking at how it's put together, um, what I've kind of typically seen is people coming up with um, lots of single click um, installs of CCAN using Docker or some other technology, um, which is great for like devs or people that just want to experiment you know, with it. But, um, you know, any of the people that are currently running um, any data portal of any size will know that that's, that's not a good long-term solution because obviously as your data sets start increasing, um, you need an underlying platform that's, that's going to expand with that. So the idea of data shades was to um, start building a scalable, highly available um, platform. So one of the key features uh, of the CCAN uh, data shapes build that, um, that I've been putting together um, is scalability. So um, just to, the, the build is fundamentally designed to work with Amazon Web Services, um, but the concepts and principles of the, um, the scripts that I've got there could be adapted to anything. And the, the underlying technology of it is actually built on Chef. So if you wanted to go out and use Google or Azure or any of those kind of things, it wouldn't be a huge amount of effort to adapt um, to that. But essentially in terms of scalability, the, the features and technologies that we're using to accomplish that is um, elastic load balancing. So again, um, just to clarify this, this, the build is designed for cloud services, okay? Again, you could, you could um, adapt it to physical tin, but, you know, cloud technology, Amazon Web Services in particular, make this kind of stuff insanely simple and easy. Um, so first step to scalability is elastic load balancing. Um, for those that don't know what load balancing is, Basically, you have a web address that points at uh, a single unit, and that spreads the load out to a bunch of servers or instances that are underneath there. So rather than having one server that's you know, trying to cope with all of your traffic, the traffic gets spread across a number of instances. Um, we implement something called auto-scaling policies. Auto-scaling policies work in one of two ways. Um, you can either have um, scheduled policies, so you can say during the day when I'm expecting a lot of traffic, uh, I need X amount of instances running. Overnight when I'm not going to get very much traffic, I want to reduce my costs, so I scale back down to just one or two instances that will just keep the site running. Um, the other type of scaling policy is, is a load-based policy. So overnight or during the day if you get a sudden unexpected load on your site somebody starts hammering you for a data set or hammering your site for a query um, the environment will monitor what the web traffic coming into the site is and look at the latency and automatically start adding um, instances into the environment to be able to cope with that load um, and then uh, with load policies when the load starts dropping off, again, to save you costs, it starts dropping instances back out again. Um, the other important part of the um, scalability is clustered architecture. Um, and by this, so what we're talking about is using clusters for the file system, clusters for the search. You know, again, instead of having one instance that's doing one particular job and is subject to being a single point of failure, clusters and environments don't suffer from these problems. Scalability and high availability pretty much go hand in hand. 
because if you've got the capability to do one, you almost automatically get the capability to do the second one. Um, and the scalability and high availability is one of the really key ingredients um, um, of the data shades build that we have. And um, anybody that's running any of the data portals um, by the unnamed company um, that is helping them with their environments, they are built on this, um, the built-in principle on the scalable, high available um, stack. And what we've done is open source what we've been working on over the last four years or so. Um, so in terms of high availability, how are we accomplishing that? Step one is we're using distributed file systems. So again, instead of having one single um, you know, instance that's serving up files either for your file store or your data store or whatever the case may be, um, where you we start we're utilizing um, distributed file systems. So one example of that is Amazon S3, um, which is an HTTP store that's just infinitely scalable. Uh, you can get you know as many requests as you want, and it will just automatically scale out and be highly available. Virtually, it would not go offline. Um, in terms of the um, the file system that needs to be on the particular instances that are running CCAN, um, we're experimenting with things like Gluster file system. There's a few out there. We're currently in the process of um, experimenting with what delivers clustered file services, but also don't, doesn't compromise on performance. Gluster's been extremely good in terms of reliability. We can just randomly turn off nodes and the file system still keeps running there. In terms of performance, there's, there's a bit more work to be done on that front. Um, in terms of high availability, another direction that we're moving in and that the data shades build utilizes is solar cloud. So CCAN sort of more or less out of the box uses solar. That is a single solar instance, which is a single point of failure. If your solar server goes down, the whole CCAN goes offline. Um, what solar cloud allows us to do is um, again spread the search across clusters. And we're using things like uh, Amazon Route 53 to do health checks on each of those nodes and it can shift from one node to another node if it becomes unavailable. The other kind of feature and benefit of Solar Cloud is that it spreads the search index across a number of nodes. So again, if, if you've got some heavy search going on on your data platform, um, that load gets spread across so the performance of your system doesn't suffer so much. Um, and then the third component, is um, Amazon RDS, which is a relational database service. And again, it's just for high availability. Instead of CCAN at the moment relies on Postgres. Um, traditionally, that would run on a single instance if that goes down. Again, your platform goes offline. Um, Amazon RDS um, basically spreads across a bunch of availability zones. So again, if the master goes down, it switches to a slave and you're still up and running. Um, the third component that the Data Shades build is providing is enterprise management. Um, and you know, when you, when you start doing anything at scale, um, having good management processes in place is, becomes really essential. So um, uh, part of that is standardized provisioning. Uh, so that you're stamping out the same build every time. Um, and we're using a product called um, AWS OpsWorks. Um, basically what OpsWorks allows us to do is split CCAN into layers. So a layer is a particular role. So you've got Postgres, that's one role, the database. Solar is another role, that's another layer. Um, and breaking the application up in this way and having application definitions for each of those layers means that um, if we wanted to upgrade from, say, Solar 5.2 to Solar 5.3, 
we can run a deploy event on the Opsworks and it will automatically deploy that out to that layer and keep our application running. Um, and that's, you know, being able to update software on the fly has always been a, a big problem. It's not so bad if you've got one server, you just need to update that server. If you have a big complex build, um, it becomes a major issue trying to, major, uh, trying to manage it. Um, going hand in hand with, um, with this standardized provisioning is um, utilizing GitHub Enterprise to do version control. So using the Opsworks stack, everything inside the stack is, um, is, is a software definition. So things like configuration, the versions of the software that we're running, and all of that's under version control. So if something starts going haywire with your platform, you can go back to the versioning system and find out who made what change when and did that create this problem. And it also gives you an easy rollback point. You can roll back to that point in time or you can just apply a patch that takes out one particular change and keeps the rest of the changes in there. Um, and again, you know, on a single server, managing this kind of stuff is, can be quite straightforward. But as soon as you start getting to size, this is a significant problem you need to solve. Um, and centralized user management. Again, when you haven't got very many users um, that you need to worry about, that's simple. As soon as you've got a lot of people to worry about, this starts getting very complex. And so, the, again, with the AWS Ops works, um, and the stack that we've built. Um, it makes it very easy to um, add and remove users in and out of the stack who's got access to what. And in this um, context, I'm talking about system administrators who has access. And also, um, you have visibility of who's got access to what. Um, and it's all role-based as well. So, you know, you can give some people one type of access for the job that they need to do and another group of people, you know, other access. Um, so, um, and this, um, this enterprise build is available um, on github.com and we can publish out the URL for it if we, for those that are interested. And more than most of you are already using it without even knowing. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>